Here at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, we have need for ultra-low density nanoporous materials that are also monolithic, meaning that they can support themselves and that they're strong enough that we can shape them into millimeter, centimeter size objects. When we were beginning about 10 years ago, these materials didn't exist and we had to go and invent them and in the process of inventing them and learning how to make them strong enough, we ended up becoming leaders in the field of low density nanoporous materials. The Nanoscale Synthesis and Characterization Laboratory has five focus areas. Nanoporous materials, nanostructure materials including full density metals, three-dimensional geometric structures, advanced nanoscale characterization of materials, and functional materials used in devices. And for example, here at Lawrence Livermore, that means using them in targets for the National Ignition Facility. My area focuses mainly on the nanostructure metals and energy storage materials. One biggest challenge of all those nanostructure materials, they are very, very small and they typically produce a very small volumes. So it's a challenge to test those materials. Nano initiation is the perfect tool to understand the mechanical property of those materials. In particular, it's very, very versatile as well as very powerful. And you test the Jens modules, hardness, strength and sensitivity, as well as activation volume of those materials. One limitation of the nano initiation is that it cannot extract the ductility of those materials. Therefore, we use intensive tests as a complementary tools to understand mechanical behaviors for practical applications. Additive manufacturing techniques typically describe processes where you build a complex three-dimensional structure or an objective by, by adding material rather than taking material away how you would do it in conventional machining. Additive manufacturing really goes only down to a micro nanoscale or maybe to 100 nanometer. If you want to con have control even further down at the atomic level, you have to design inks which have that information already built in and that's what we are doing. Here we use two photon polymerization direct laser writing, which uses a tightly focused laser to poly locally polymerize and resin and by moving the laser focus you can write a structure. The collaboration with the Additive Manufacturing Group really opens the door to make complex artificial pore systems which mimic the complexity which you can find in the filtration system which nature designed, for example, in the kidney or the liver. Carbon air gels were invented at Lawrence Livermore National Labs uh, back in the late 1980s. And since I've been here, I've kind of continued trying to uh, develop um, carbon air gels by incorporating graphene and carbon nanotube, some of the more recent um, carbon allotropes that have been discovered. By intelligently designing the macroporous structure of the materials, we can actually tune the mass transport through them, as well as optimizing certain properties such as their stiffness. Most of our research for nanoporous materials is related to laser targets. Yeah, we have uh, adapted the ion beam analysis method that is routinely used in many laboratories um, around the planet, we specifically adapted it for low density nanoporous materials. We do um, work on uh, nuclear materials and trying to understand the uh, dynamics of radiation damage processes, very basic. Uh, studies of how defects created in different uh, collision cascades interact and form uh, stable damage in nuclear materials. My area of focus is nanoporous materials, specifically functionalizing or templating nanoporous materials using atomic layer deposition. We developed a, a new nanotubular material by LD templating. The way that we do that is we apply an LD coating on a nanoporous scaffold that, that is etched away afterwards. This uh, morphology of the material is very unique in a way that we can actually control the feature size and also the density and we can easily exchange the composition by using a different LD process. The materials we develop usually support the technological and scientific mission of the lab. With that, we are working on taking these materials and integrating them into functional devices so that they can be used for experiments. The Nanoscale Synthesis and Characterization Laboratory reached out across the world to collaborate with leading scientists 
In addition, we also collaborate with scientists at the light sources at the APS and the ALS to do advanced characterization. One thing I really enjoy about the Nanoscale Synthesis and Characterization Lab is the chance to work in multidisciplinary teams where each team member is an expert in his or her own field, ranging from theory to simulation to different experimental capabilities. We have great teams, we have APS fellows, we have mid-career award winners, and we have been working together oh, almost a decade now, and we are a championship team, and we could say we are a dynasty in nanostructure materials.